everybody, it's Mrs. Cat, and I'm here to go through our bond character summary notes. At this point, you've completed graphing chemical bonds, and we're going to take some of the information from that exercise, that activity, and um, really just put together a nice summary of our three types of bond characters, metallic character, covalent character, and ionic character. Okay, starting with, and you should have this sheet, um, and I'm just going to walk through this. So some of the things that we have on this um, that you're going to notice are at the top, we obviously have our bond character, we have our charge model, a particle diagram that includes some information about electronegativities. We'll put in a definition, talk about the electronegativity of both the low and the higher electronegativity atom element types, and then a description of the bonds. So um, starting with metallic character, one of the things that we're going to notice here is that the charge is being shared, and we say that the electrons are delocalized. Okay, that is going to mean that they are not going to be found in that space in between where the overlap of our atoms are going to be. Okay, so what we're going to notice with this is that these delocalized electrons um, are going to be having an attraction and they're going to be distributed around the nuclei, um, and they can kind of be anywhere. Um, what we're going to see is that we have one atom where the electronegativity is less than 2.2, and another one where the electronegativity is less than 1.7. These are both obviously going to be metals, making this a metallic bond. Okay? This type of interaction happens when both of these atoms have a low attraction, for electrons, that's what electronegativity is. So they're both so low that these valence electrons are going to be attracted mutually or equally um, to both nuclei. And so the electrons are going to move around the nuclei of any of those multiple adjacent atoms. Now, obviously, this is going to typically happen with more than just two atoms. But to keep our diagram simple, um, we just show two atoms here. So looking at that particle diagram one more time, a couple things to notice, we have an overlap of our valence shells, but the electrons are not located in that overlap in between, and that's because of that low attraction for the electrons. Okay, that's probably the newer of these bonding models. The covalent bonding and ionic bonding characters are probably things that you've talked about before in other classes and are a little bit more familiar with. So let's start by looking at covalent character. Now, in a covalent bond or covalent bond character, we're going to have charge or electron sharing. And the word that we use for this is covalence, okay, which obviously is where the name of the bond comes from. This is going to be classified or defined as a localized attraction for valence electron pairs between two nuclei, causing the electron cloud to overlap. And we're going to see that in the overlap of these circles in our particle diagrams. We're also going to notice that our electrons are in that overlapping space. Now, the location of the electrons in that overlapping space, whether they are equally shared or unequally shared, is going to be dependent on whether we have um, electron or electronegativities in those atoms that are pretty close or are further apart. Okay, that's going to be talking about the polarity of the bonds, which we'll talk about that at a later time. So what we're going to see is that we're going to have one electronegativity in an atom that's really high, okay, more than 2.2. So it's going to have a really strong attraction for the electrons in the other atom. Um, our second atom is also going to have a high electronegativity. It's going to be greater than 1.7. So depending on what the other atom is, we may have an equal or a slightly weaker attraction for those electrons. These are both going to be non-metal atoms. Okay? Now, if we talk about describing this bond, what happens is because these atoms are so high in their attraction for the electrons, this causes those clouds to overlap. And the pair or pairs, depending on whether we have a single, a double, or a triple bond, are mutually, or, or are mutually attracted to each of the nuclei in that um, the atoms in that bond. So it's possible to have like what we do in our diagram here, have a single bond where there's only one pair of electrons in that overlapping electron cloud, 
If we have two pairs of electrons inside of that overlap, that's going to signify a double covalent bond. Three pairs of electrons is gonna show a triple covalent bond. Okay, as you add more pairs of electrons, the strength of that bond is going to increase because more electrons are going to be more attractive towards those nuclei, pulling them closer together. It's gonna to be harder to break. Okay, final type of bond character is ionic bond character. In these cases, we have a transfer of charge. So electrons are moving from one valence shell to another. This is going to create ions that have their own charges. Okay. Positively charged ions are called cations. Negatively charged ions are called anions. Okay. This type of charge transfer is called electrovalence. You're going to notice a difference in our particle picture. Okay. You're going to have no overlap in your electron clouds. You're going to have a transfer of electrons to the atom with a higher electronegativity, meaning it has a stronger attraction for those electrons. Okay, that gives it a negative charge because it gained an electron. Okay, the atom with a lower electronegativity loses its electron, making it have a positive charge. Okay, the attraction between these oppositely charged ions is going to give us that ionic bond character. Okay, and as we know by this point, we have to have these ions combining in a ratio that gives us a neutral charge overall. Okay, these are going to have a metal and a non-metal in these types of bonds, these ionic character bonds. Okay, the non-metal is going to have a high electronegativity, greater than 2.2, um, and that's going to be a non-metal again. Okay, our lower atom of electronegativity will be less than 1.7, and that's going to be a metal. Again, no overlap of electron clouds, and these are going to have positive and negative charges depending on the electronegativity and the transfer of electrons. Okay? This happens because we've got one atom that's so much higher in electronegativity, it's got such a strong attraction for that electron that it's either going to really completely transfer that electron over or almost completely transfer it over to that electron or the atom of a higher electronegativity, that's gonna give that atom a negative charge because of the gain of electrons. And the other atom that lost the electron is gonna have a positive charge. So as we know, opposite charges attract, that's going to create our ionic bond. So those are our three types of bond character. Metallic, where we have charge sharing, overlap of electron clouds, but the electrons are delocalized. These atoms are going to both be metals and they're going to have low electronegativities. Covalent character, again, we're going to have charge sharing, but this time the overlap of the electron clouds is where you will find the electrons in the bond. This is called covalence. And both of the atoms in these will be non-metals with high electronegativities. Okay, finally, ionic character, we've got one atom of very high electronegativity, that'll be an, a non-metal. One atom of low electronegativity, that'll be a metal. And because of those big differences in electronegativities, we have a transfer of electrons to the higher electronegative atom. That will have a negative charge, leaving the other atom with a positive charge. And that's what creates our ionic bond character. Okay. So now that we've got that taken care of, your task is going to be to take this um, periodic table and bond character triangle and identify the regions where bond character is most likely ionic, covalent, and metallic. So I'm gonna move my picture here so we can take a look at the triangle. So you've got these um, boxes in these three regions where there are dashed lines. That's where you're going to put those labels, either ionic, covalent, or metallic. You're going to color both your triangle and your periodic table. So choose a color, three different colors for your electronegativity range. That's going to be greater than 2.2, 1.7 to 2.2, and less than 1.7. So you're going to use those colors to not only color in your periodic table based on the electronegativities, but also color in your electronegativities in your, um, in your bonding triangle. Okay, so here's the whoops, here's the bigger version of that periodic table, okay, um, or not of the periodic table, of the bonding triangle. 
What I also want you to notice is on the side, you have these little boxes on each of the axes. Okay, you're gonna color those in as well to help you, okay? Um, and so that'll help you with how you're gonna color these, um, these ions. Now, you'll notice a couple of arrows, okay, that this is gonna show that this set of atoms is supposed to be close to this axis, this set of atoms is close to this axis here, Okay, and then this one is here. Now, obviously these are bigger than what you would wanna do um, or what we would wanna do to put it on the axis so that you can actually color it. So you're just gonna do your best with that, okay? So to give you an idea of where to start, I'm gonna show you what this would look like if you were to pick three colors and start to color in your axis, okay? So we're gonna have greater than 2.2, pick some color and then start shading in on your axis, okay? Both your X and Y, okay? Between 1.7 and 2.2 will be a second color, and then less than 1.7 will be your third color. And then that'll kind of give you an idea as to how to color in the rest of your atoms and how to classify those three bond types. Okay, that's what you're gonna submit for me if you're in my virtual class. If you're in my, if you're in a hybrid class, you're just gonna keep this and your teacher will talk to you about what to do with this. Okay, so those are our three different types of bond characters. Um, fill out your, coloring on the back side of this notes page for both the bond character triangle and your periodic table and reach out to your teacher with any questions that you have. Thanks and we'll see you soon for another chemistry video.